Hi everybody, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct and welcome to our YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're gonna give you an in-depth review of the Revo 2.0 by Pride Mobility. Alright, now before we get started with this video, I do want to mention a few quick things. Number one, if you want a copy of our free product catalog, all you have to do is go to our website, www.mobilitydirect.com. Click on the green button at the top of every page that says free catalog, fill out the simple short form, and you'll get one in the mail within one to two weeks tops. I also want to say that if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're automatically entered into our monthly giveaway raffle. That's right, once a month, we give away a free powered mobility product to a random subscriber of our YouTube channel. So if you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Just hit that little subscribe button, you are automatically entered, and you could be the next lucky winner like the winners you're seeing on the screen now. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I have two different models here. They're both called the Revo 2.0, one is model S66, and as you can see, it's in blue in a three-wheel configuration. You can get the three-wheel in gray as well, and I have the four-wheel version in gray, which is model S67. The main difference between the three and the four-wheel is that with the three-wheel, you have a sharper turning radius, and you have more room for your legs and your feet. Your feet can go around each side of the center steering column where the front wheel is and you won't have to have your feet up high pointing upwards causing your knees to be closer to the tiller assembly like on the four wheel however on the four wheel even though you do have to put your feet up high unless you have smaller feet which i can fit my feet down here no problem but if you have like a size 13 shoe or if you're really you know long-legged then you may have to be forced to put your feet up high and your knees, if you have really long legs, might be really close to the handlebar. What's nice though is you can adjust the tilting angle of the tiller assembly by loosening up a little knob here counterclockwise and then you just push it out further away and then turn that knob clockwise to lock it in. So if you need more room, now you can see it's completely out of the way. So the steering column is tilt adjustable, which is great. And with the four wheel version, you're gonna have better stability while going off road. It's not gonna turn as sharp. So if you are going to like a theme park, you know, the lines at Disney, sometimes you have to make several sharp U-turns. The three wheel version is probably gonna be better. But again, if you're going on grass, the four wheel version is gonna ride better and perform better. Now, what makes this model special is that they both have a 400 pound weight capacity. No other scooter in its class has a 400 pound weight capacity and the ability to come apart, which we'll show you how to do in a little bit. But it basically breaks down into six lightweight pieces, very manageable size and weight, so you can put it in the trunk of almost any car, uh, especially a van or an SUV with, with no problem. So it's easy to travel with. I've personally taken this thing to Disney, Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. It's the best. My personal favorite for going on trips, especially to theme parks, where you wanna travel with a backpack, some drinks, a couple of snacks. You can put a rear cage style basket on the back, and you also have these convenient storage bins underneath the seat that open up. So you can put your cell phone, your wallet, your keys, basically a couple of little belongings on each side, the left and the right side, you've got those storage bins. Now, as you can see, the seat does rotate 360 degrees. So if you wanna pull up to a table to enjoy a meal, you can rotate the seat backwards and you don't have the handlebar assembly in the way. We actually have a video showing you what it's like to go on a dining experience at a restaurant with this model, check it out on our YouTube video. Aside from the seat rotating 360 degrees, it also has the ability to adjust the 
seat height. So we'll show you how that's done. When you take the seat apart, it's pretty easy. You have the flip up armrests. The armrests are height adjustable and width adjustable as well. You can see on the back, there's just a few little hand screws and some say, securement pins. You just take the securement pins out, loosen up the hand screws and the armrests slide out or closer in to create more distance between each armrest. So it's a pretty nice feature. It has the same adjustment uh, capabilities for the height. Only with the height, you need to use the Allen key that comes with your user manual bag. So you put the little Allen key in that set screw and you can raise the armrest height up or down. Now keep in mind, both of the models have the same comfort adjustment feature. So here's that rotation knob that you can use to tilt the handlebar assembly closer or further away from your body. And I also want to show you a couple of other things starting from the top here. So let's take a look at the dash. This is a Delta tiller. It's a wraparound tiller, very easy to control. You can drive it with one hand, the keys right here. It comes with two keys. Put the key in the ignition, turn it on. Your battery meter is gonna light up. The battery meter has several lights. You have five green lights, three amber yellow lights, and two red. Right now, the battery is discharged a little bit. That's why the first two green lights are off. Typically, when it gets down to the yellow is when I start to charge. When you first get your unit, make sure you charge it overnight. You have a speed control limiting knob. So if you want to go to the full speed, you bring it all the way to the rabbit. If you want to slow down that top speed, bring it all the way to the tortoise. You have an eco mode and a full speed mode. With the full speed mode, you're going to go just over five miles per hour. Eco mode is going to reduce the speed about 50% and it's gonna be a lot easier to control indoors. Now the lighting kit's pretty impressive. You have running lights, which are basically like brake lights. As soon as you let go of the throttle, the brake lights kick in. You have an under storage light here, which it's hard to see because it's daytime, but basically you have an illuminating light underneath the handlebar assembly to maybe look inside your pocketbook, your wallet in the nighttime and see what's going on down here. You also have a headlight, which I'm gonna turn off and on for you to see, and it's nice, it lights up the path in front of you. Now the throttle system is super convenient, very easy to use. You just need one hand. So if you use your right hand, you can even use one finger to pull back to go forward or push forward on the paddle to go backwards. Now, as you can see, whatever you're doing with the right hand throttle, the left hand throttle does the opposite. So if you wanna go forward with your left hand, you push forward on the throttle paddle or pull back to go back with the left hand. They are throttle sensitive. So if you have the speed all the way up on sport mode, if you just pull ever so lightly on the throttle until it starts moving, you're going to notice it crawls at a very slow speed. Once you pull all the way, that's when it takes off and starts reaching that top speed. You have a horn button here, a USB charging port, which is very convenient. You can charge your cell phone when it's running low on battery. Everybody's uh, battery on their phones dies at the end of the day. That's just how they're built nowadays. And on the, I'm going to show you on the other model here. On the left side of the steering assembly, you have a charging port. It just uses a typical XLR barrel connector to charge the battery. Comes with the scooter, very easy to use. And we're gonna throw it on the screen for you to just see how it works. Now, something else that I didn't mention earlier is that you can actually charge the batteries when they are disconnected from the scooter. So you would take them out, stack them together like they are now, but while they're off the scooter, as long as they're connected together, you can charge the battery with the charger with that off-board charging port right there. So you have that charging port and you have the one right conveniently located by the handlebar on the left side so you don't really have to get too low bend down or anything to get to it now what's nice is that it comes with an extra large front basket this is a big boy basket you can fit a lot of groceries in here and it just hooks on with these two rails nothing to it so i'm just going to put that back right now by the way on the back we were looking at it earlier in case you missed it there is a one inch square hitch receiver for universal accessories. So you can put that extra large cage style shopping basket in the back, oxygen tank holder, walker holder, cane holder, tons of universal accessories work with that. You also have a nice little pouch on the back of the seat to put your 
charger, your user manual, any personal belongings that you'd like. As you'll notice here, it has some really nice rugged tires that perform really well on grass. Really nice design to the rim or the wheel as well. You've got some reflectors here, the Revo 2.0 logo insignia, and a really nice floorboard with an ergonomic kind of grippy texture to it. Now something else you'll notice is it has anti-tip wheels in the back and both on the four wheel and the three wheel version, you're gonna have front and rear suspension. Now on the four wheel version, you have one big independent suspension coil on the front and the rear. Whereas on the four, on the three wheel version rather, you're gonna have two smaller suspension coils on each side of the front wheel and the same single extra large suspension coil on the rear. Big powerful motor in there. Both of these units come with an excellent parts warranty and a one year in-home service agreement as well, backed by the most trusted name brand in mobility, Pride Mobility. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that these scooters have automatic brakes. There's no brake lever, there's no brake pedal. As soon as you let go of the throttle, the brakes are automatically on. It's not gonna move, even if I try to push it right now. The brakes are always on. The only way to turn the brakes off is to look at the back of the unit. You're gonna find a yellow lever and it has a little sticker that shows while it's in the, the back position here, it's in drive mode. If you wanna put it in neutral mode to push it manually, you have to disengage the brakes. So now that the unit is disengaged, the brakes rather, I can push the unit manually. So if your batteries die, that's how you're gonna do it. But if you try to turn the unit on while the brakes are off, it's not gonna work. It's just gonna beep and yell at you. Five beeps. If you look at your user manual, there is a beep code guide. And if you look up the five beep code guide, it's gonna tell you that your electromagnetic brakes are not engaged. It's that simple, folks. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up the demonstration of all of uh, the comfort features and what makes it unique. Now it's time to take it apart and show you how easily it fits into the trunk of the car. All right, so we have a Nissan Altima here. It's got a medium-sized trunk. This is a bigger scooter, so if you have a really small car like a Volkswagen Beetle, a Bug, it might not fit. So it really just depends on your trunk space, but we're gonna show you how to take it apart and uh, we'll go ahead and put it in the trunk of the car. So the first thing I like to do is grab the seat fold the backrest down. On this model, you do need to open the under seat storage bins in order to remove the seat. Once they're open, you can just pick straight up. Avoid tilting in any direction when you're lifting the seat up or else it'll seem like it's stuck and it won't come out easily at all. So I'm gonna put that to the side and I'm gonna show you the rest of the disassembly process. There's two battery packs, each have a handle. You wanna grab the left one first, pick straight up. Grab the right one pick straight up as well. They're not very heavy. And at this point, the unit's almost fully disassembled. What you want to do next is lock the steering assembly so that your steering wheel doesn't swing around. I'm going to fold it first. So I'm going to loosen this tilting adjustment knob, bring it to about here. I'm not going to let it slam down on the floorboard. I'm going to put it about at a 90 degree angle with the steering column here at the neck and lock it in. Tighten this up. Now here's what I'm, what I'm talking about. This can swing around while it's in the trunk of your car. It can scratch up the other pieces that it's next to. So you use this little spring-loaded knob to lock your steering wheel. Now keep in mind, if your steering wheel is locked, you won't be able to turn it when you're actually using the scooter. So remember to unlock it when you unfold it or put it back together rather. So at this point, it's locked in, nice and secure. Next step, I'm gonna grab with the seat post. By the way, there's a nut and a bolt going through the seat post right here. If you loosen up this nut and bolt and pull it out, you can adjust the height of the seat post. So if you wanna raise the seat post up or lower it to set the seat height at a different uh, position, you have about a two inch range to work with. So I'm gonna put one hand on the seat post, one hand on this lever, pick up with both, and there you have it. The heaviest piece is going to be the front half. Depending on the model, uh, the, the three-wheel version is going to be a little lighter, but they both have the heaviest piece, it rather, is going to be the front half on both the four-wheel and the three-wheel model. All right, now I'm going to give you a little tip. When you're putting all of these pieces in the trunk of your car to save space, the seat is one of the bulkier pieces. 
So what I recommend doing is taking the armrest out. It's not hard, just loosen up these screws, pull the pins out, and you could take the armrest out completely, okay? They take a much more um, low profile kind of footprint and you know overall dimension when you flatten them out like this. So don't lose your seat uh, post, your armrest pins rather. And now you can see you have a lot less to work with. And we're gonna put this in first. I'm gonna try and tuck this in to the very back of the trunk. What I'm gonna do next is grab the batteries grab each pack and put it on each side or try to squeeze both of them on one side of the seat. I'm gonna grab the rear half. I'm gonna put it right here. Now, assuming you have a trunk space that's at least this big, or bigger, you should be able to put the front half on the left side. There you have it. Now I can put my armrests in, don't have to worry about them too much. I could just tuck them in somewhere. In this case, I'm gonna slide them behind the seat back there they're kind of out of the way. And last but not least, I'm gonna grab my basket. And there you have it, folks. The entire Revo 2.0 fits in the trunk of an Altima. All right, so as you can see, traveling with this scooter is very possible. Considering it's a 400 pound weight capacity scooter, I think that's pretty impressive. Now, if you have a truck or an SUV, no problem. You probably still have room to put things in the back. So let's go ahead and put it all back together, take it out now. Now, when you're putting the rear half and the front half together, it's important to know how it works. On the rear, you have this steel tube with green stickers on the left and right side, right in front of the tires. And if you look at the front half of the unit, there is a part of the steel frame as well with green stickers. Now these green stickers are on the hooks that fall on top of the bar in the rear. So it helps to have one hand on the front here by the base to control it from tilting. So I'm holding the front um, steering column neck at the 90 degree point and I'm controlling it so that I can back those hooks up, line them up with the green stickers and just let it drop right over the top. And it clicks right into place. At this point, you wanna loosen the tilt adjustment knob for the tiller, go counterclockwise, tilt it all the way up, go clockwise to lock it back into position. Don't forget, your steering lock is in, so you wanna push in, give it a quarter of a turn counterclockwise, now you can turn again. I'm gonna grab my battery packs. You will need to put the battery packs in in a certain order. First, you have to put the right one in, which that's why the sticker there says number one. You have to put the right one in first. Just line it up with the battery terminal connector on the footboard, drops right in. Grab your left battery, and as you can see, they're stackable. So that one that's uh, sticking up will go right in here underneath the one on the left and make a connection. Two 12 volt battery packs delivering 24 volts to the whole system. I'm going to grab my seat. Remember, the underseat storage containers need to be open. You can see in the middle of the seat underneath there, there's a male connector, and that's going to fall into the seat post female connection point. Line it up, then level out the seat, drop it in. Close your underseat storages, put the backrest back up, and we're almost done. There's two hooks on the front steering column, and we have the two rails on the back of the basket. Just line them up, drop it in. It's that easy. Now I'm just gonna grab my armrests, put them back in. Not much to it there. And we're almost done. 
not bad. We're gonna go ahead and fast forward through this part and we'll be right back with you. All right, so we're all done. The scooter's back together and it's working just fine. Now, as you can see on the three wheel, I'm giving you a little demonstration. Look how sharp it turns. Really good turning radius. Now on the four wheel, if I turn all the way, you can see it takes a lot more space to do a, a donut. So the turning radius, like I was saying earlier, is not as good. Figured I'd demonstrate that for you. But overall, they're both really impressive models. And we have tons of videos on this exact model showing you what it's like to go off road, grocery store trips, restaurants, theme parks, you name it. Overall, it's a very versatile scooter. I think it's one of the best value scooters for something that's considered closer to the heavy duty line. Most travel friendly scooters only support 300 pounds. This holds up to 400, which is very impressive. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the in-depth review of this video. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for many other videos on this exact model. We do offer this product for sale tax-free. Shipping is free at mobilitydirect.com. If you have any questions, you can call our non-commissioned sales experts. They're not pushy. They'd love to earn your business and answer any questions that you have, or just leave a comment with your question in the comment section below. We reply to every comment on our YouTube channel. And again, this is the Revo 2.0. This is the four-wheel model S67. Look at that suspension. This is awesome. My personal favorite scooter. Again, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.